list of priority initiatives um, that we would track and report to the board uh, three times per year. This is the third of those three report outs. Um, and then we also will present those strategic initiatives for the 2014-15 school year. So um, strategic plan is sort of the overriding document. The goals in that plan, these are sort of a subset of those goals or they're specific action items that people will be able to see, students will be able to experience, but some way notice how the district is changing in uh, direct reflection to our direction with the strategic plan. So just wanted to give a, a kind of a brief uh, uh, outline of that. There are of course other documents like the technology plan uh, or the facilities plan that also help to guide our work and all of that is available on our website. So I just wanted to kind of give a, an update for somebody new who might be, might be watching. So we'll start with uh, last year's um, priority initiatives. I'll send around some copies. Again, this is uh, the third of three report outs on strategic plan uh, priority initiatives for the 2013-14 school year. Um, so Mike, if we could go to student development. We'll start with student development and we'll move towards um, uh, student achievement. For the folks who are watching at home, we have four icons uh, available and you're probably seeing on your screen. A check mark means that we have completed this initiative. Um, a green uh, notebook page means there's significant progress. A yellow notebook page is steady progress and red means some progress. So what you'll see tonight are icons that are check marks or green for significant uh, progress. We set out as a goal to have check marks in every area and we do in most but there are two areas we'll talk about why we're making progress but not yet willing to say that that is a completed uh, part of the strategic plan. So the first one um, and I will read each one but I will not go into significant explanation over the ones that we reported out to as check marks previously. So in our October and our February meeting, we moved some to check marks and we spent time going through why those were check marks at that time. So if I just read it and move past it, it's because it's already an existing check mark. But certainly if you have a question or would like some clarification, that would feel free to, to jump in. Um, student development, offer an activities bus that provides transportation for uh, 6th through 12th grade students participating in extracurricular offerings. We started that in the fall. It has been highly successful, particularly with the middle school students. Um, so that has been a check mark uh, almost from the beginning. There will be some tweaks for next year because we've learned over time through uh, collecting the data that there are some routes, particularly at the high school level, that just simply don't get used. And there's no sense of using taxpayer dollars for uh, to run buses that are empty. So uh, we will continue it. It is very uh, uh, highly successful and uh, parents uh, appreciate that. But we have tweaked, especially in some of those areas where the jewel can pick up that slack. So uh, we'll continue <coughs> that. Um, the second one is launch a challenging behavior team to support K-12 student success. Previously that had been a significant progress. Um, we're moving that to a check mark and some of the data. We've served uh, 70 students, uh, continue to train the, the team uh, and make some new hires. In fact, we discussed a new hire uh, this morning, a, a school psychologist we're trying to bring on board and expanding the resources to continue to move forward to in that uh, goal area and you will see in the sheet I'm going to hand out to you uh, about next year's priority initiatives the next step we'll, we will take but um, we have launched it and now we'll bring take some significant next steps. Uh, How big is our team stand? Right to well we're, we've got a couple offers floating out there yeah. uh, we're, we're hoping that it, it will be filled. three very shortly uh, and then expand from there, but some of those expansions will be existing folks. Okay. So you'll see we're going to focus on some things in, the, in our, uh, in our, in some of our buildings. Uh, number three was to pilot the reporting of performance character to middle school parents. Middle school report cards will include measurables, measurements of learning behaviors. Um, we did do that. We uh, had a pilot. It was done the second and third trimesters for middle school students. As a parent of two middle schoolers, I saw that uh, report and so that we did meet that goal of, of doing the pilot. So we'll talk again when we get to next year's 
goals, what are next steps uh, for that pilot. Um, under community engagement, offer college math courses at Senior and Hempstead. Uh, Loris College was uh, on campus to offer to our most advanced mathematicians uh, college level uh, credit math courses. Um, and uh, that was uh, successful. We had uh, good participation there. That's previous check mark. Um, provide planning, facilities, and technology support for the inaugural Summer Reading Academy as part of the community wide third grade reading initiative. That took place. Uh, last, so that was a previous check mark as well. So, pending questions, I'll move on. Um, a new check mark engage parents and families in a district wide effort to promote the importance of regular school attendance. So, we've had a year long initiative with that. You maybe saw the billboards, you saw the um, uh, commercials uh, that were done. There was literature provided to parents about the importance of, of uh, daily attendance uh, to students. There was some, uh, some follow-up with parents even with the open enrollment when there were issues about attendance about well if you're going to open enroll to a school that's further from home you know and your attendance isn't good well, what, what can we do to shore that up kind of thing. So uh, an overall focus on the fact that the data is very clear as we would suspect that students who are at school on a regular basis tend to fare much better than those who miss uh, uh, school. Implement the state METS grant to better prepare special education students to be college and career ready. That is uh, completion. Um, so we serve as a, as a model site for the state. We have students engaged in many areas of business um, and we are also invited to share that or we're invited to share that information at a statewide conference. So that grant which connects um, and students with, uh, with uh, some special needs with employers and um, some, I wouldn't call them internship, but work experience uh, type situations that can also often lead into full-time or part-time employment uh, upon graduation. Um, partner with the City of Dubuque and the Community Foundation of Greater Dubuque to utilize AmeriCorps VISTA volunteers to implement joint priorities. We've had uh, the VISTAs uh, in place now, so that is also a check mark. It's a, tapping into uh, a very valuable resource at a, a very minimal price. Effective resource management. Um, you will see that that is a green icon versus a check mark and you'll remember that the update 59 computer labs and add over a thousand tablets, new lab furniture and um, enhanced wiring across the district throughout the technology plan. Uh, it is a green uh, icon versus the check mark because there is still some work going on this summer, but it's on schedule, on time, on budget, so it will be completely implemented uh, prior to the start of the school year. Uh, I would say if we had this meeting several weeks from now, it would be a check mark, but to be upfront, we wanted to leave it an icon until it is a check mark, so we'll keep uh, reporting back to that as, uh, as we move forward. Uh, enhanced facilities with a priority on the Hempstead renovation, Kennedy renovation, and others. New learning spaces will better meet facility needs for educating students. This group has had uh, tours both at Hempstead and Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy will be uh, completely ready in the fall. Uh, it's a beautiful addition. Um, some of the water control measures that were put into place uh, are also an advantage for the for the neighbors. Hempstead is. Uh, slightly behind schedule uh, because of the winter but catching up quickly and we all know that parts of that the auditorium and the gym space will be available this fall other aspects will there's another year of pain <laughs> to come quite honestly for uh, the construction phase and the parking and, and, the, and the moving of those pieces but again end of the day it's going to be a great uh, enhancement to that to that facility um, everybody's favorite launch a new finance system on July 1st uh, Kevin and team successfully uh, launched that and so we do uh, have a much more automated um, uh, finance and uh, and payroll system that's interactive allows folks uh, employees to adjust their uh, insurances or um, sign their contracts uh, those types of things electronically so that did happen Expand the 21st century learning groups to 72 secondary teachers. That also is a previous check mark. Those groups had a great year. Uh, we did have some uh, reporting out of that as well when we were at uh, our board meeting at Jefferson and saw a short video about the success uh, that that played with the teachers who experienced that. Um, 
begin implementation of Iowa's teacher quality initiatives based on state reform measures, including peer review and teacher leadership opportunities. Peer review happened this year uh, in the district. That was also a previous check mark. And then the teacher leadership part, uh, we did apply for that grant and we're one of 39 successful school districts in receiving uh, those dollars. Student achievement, and again, remember when we report out a lot of this data, the student achievement data is usually uh, is usually fall or it, or winter time. And yeah, same with uh, Kevin's financial data. Usually, it's uh, it's the fall or, or winter time, not in the summer. Um, <coughs> student achievement expand alternative education support with additional life coach, tech coach, counselors for the ALC. So we did uh, take a look at the needs of the ALC students, alternative learning center, and make sure that they have the the staff uh, that was needed for those students to be successful. So that was a previous check mark. Implement a new eighth grade digital literacy curriculum. That happened this year. So again, a, a previous check mark. And then the last one, uh, integrate the Common Core with response to intervention to identify and respond to learning behavior challenges. That is a green icon that is somewhat of a moving target, uh, both at the, at the state level and the local level. But we have made some progress there. And uh, we'll share sort of next steps with that in the initiatives for the 2014-15 school year. So that was really quick, uh, but again, most of it is previous data, and uh, so we didn't want to spend too much time sort of rehashing that, but certainly if there are questions, we'd be happy to entertain those. Any questions? No, I just, think, I just think that as we come to the close of the fiscal year here, to list all these accomplishments and go back is a uh, very good for our district to show that we have a plan and that we just show that we're following up on what we say we're going to do. Absolutely. And when we develop both these and then the ones for next year, we are looking at particularly the purple box to ensure are we touching on everything? Because we might not touch on everything every year, but in the course of that three to five year lifespan of this plan, we would certainly want to make sure that we're paying attention to all of those details. Uh, one of the other things that we say often is, you know, not everything we do is on this sheet, but everything that's on this sheet we will do. So that's, you know, it makes sense that we can't obviously list every detail of, of, of our, you know, of what we're going to do and keep it to a page. And we wanted to keep it to a, in a format that was readily accessible to, and in terms that uh, people uh, in the community could understand. They didn't have to be educators to understand the terminology that we chose. Right. Um, Stan, on the attendance awareness kind of campaign mm -hmm. that we ran, is it too early to figure out did that actually result in better attendance? That is, and Shirley's here. Shirley, do you want to step up and sit next to Kevin and speak to that? This was a baseline year, and so because we just finished with our student attendance, we pulled all of the data from Power School, and we are breaking it down by building, so soon we will know exactly how many students have been chronically absent, which means they've missed more than 10% of our school year. So by next year this time, we will be able to tell you the um, improvement in attendance because we've always tracked, <coughs> excuse me, average daily attendance, so we're tracking it in a different way this year. But we can share later in the fall or <coughs> what that data tells us as far as a baseline for this year that we just completed. Perfect. Yeah, I knew there was a lot of a lot of what was in our strategic plan the first year was doing exactly what you really described, was creating you know, the data, collecting it, creating a baseline, and then working from there. So. Absolutely. Yeah, we wanted to make sure that, that we were drawing logical conclusions based on the data and yeah. not just uh, jumping in. Sure. Yeah. Jim? I had another question. Uh, how do you uh, report the uh, character back to the middle school parents? What, what is the mechanism you're using? <laughs> so it's part of their report card. Part of their report card. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it like a citizenship type grade or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Very similar to that, Lynn. I, you're probably well, and we've done a cross -re reference. It is very citizenship. Are you here for your class? Are you participating in class? So on and so forth. It is cross-reference with our 21st century initiative that, you know, if these are the 21st century type of students that we want, that these are the behaviors that we would want those children to practice. Because they're not always great at them at first, but practice makes perfect. It's a repetition piece. So we have actually cross-referenced what looks like to be a very academic piece with a, be a behavioral piece. 
And, and Jim, we're going to dig into that more next year, uh, and you'll see that on, my, on the priority initiatives for next year as well. Thank you. In the fall, I, I would like it if we could, you know, I, I always enjoy the, the board planning session that we do every fall where we get together and just kind of go through things. It's a chance for board members to throw out anything that's on their mind or things that we hear from citizens, more <coughs> importantly, that, that could be an issue with citizens. And it's just a good chance for us all to get on the same page. It's great with every other year elections that, that the fall of the elections, it's great that new board members can come on board and instantly get stuff <coughs> off their chest and onto paper if it merits that. Um, but even on the off years, it's great when we all get together. So I, I hope we can continue to do that. Absolutely. That's been yeah, it wasn't too many years ago where every year there was an election, and so that was a necessity, but it is now every other year. But I think it's good because now you've got a board that's had a year minimum mm -hmm. to work together, and it can really yeah, enhance some of those conversations. So absolutely, we'll do that again. This is working, too. You know, I asked Kevin I, when I audited the books a month ago, I told Kevin Kelleher that you know, I, I've never seen the atmosphere, at least at the forum level, uh, as as positive as it is right now, and um, I, it was as if he was programmed to say it. I still don't completely trust him, but he, his response was, well, it's the strategic plan. It almost knocked me out of my seat. I said, what do you think the reason is? So clearly, there's been a lot of attention that's gone on within the organization on making sure that we execute this plan, which to me feels like the ultimate accountability back to the citizen which we all know that as a citizen-owned organization, it's just healthier when our organization is in sync with citizen needs. They elect us, we give input in concert with staff, we come up and say this is the plan, and then we go off and do it. So ultimately the, the citizen has the ability to elect representatives to carry their needs out, and this is actually the conduit for which that value system gets implemented into the organization. And it's just been a really smooth process. I felt a lot of hand-in-hand -hand work that goes back and forth between staff and the board, and, and ultimately, anecdotally, the, the citizens seem, I, from where I sit, pretty pleased about where we're at. And it feels good to me that we can say that. You, you, we always have work to do, and we're never going to please everybody, but I think we're trying hard to make sure that this is a community-owned school district and that we're, we all excel at what we are supposed to excel at. Thank you. I, I agree, and, and you do have to be careful with what Kevin tells you, but um, I think this is a, is a, a good document in that we work really hard to be specific in what it is we're setting out to accomplish. We, we develop this as a team over probably four or five uh, meetings. We get some input from, from building principals and from other folks. But we try to be, we always have to caution ourselves not to get too deep into the educational language or too philosophical in nature. And so that's where we, we kind of go back and forth until we try to get to a point where it is uh, big enough picture that it should be brought to this board, so it's not so far into the weeds, but it's also specific enough that the board, the community, a student, a teacher, a secretary can see is this really happening or isn't it happening. Sometimes when it gets a little too high, it's hard to know whether that's really being being accomplished or not. So we try to, to, to take this document again and, and, and place it underneath the strategic plan. I mean, these actions support uh, portions of this, the strategic <coughs> plan, but in a way that's very uh, accessible to evaluate. Uh, you know, the technology part, for example, is really clear. Did we put more technology <coughs> in student and staff hands this year than we did the year before? And next year we'll be able to measure that same thing. Whether that's conversation with teachers saying, you know, tell us how you're using technology in your classroom, or whether it's, you know, talking to our students saying, tell us how you, especially those who have experienced not having the technology and those and now having it, how, how is life different now that you have uh, teachers who utilize technology? So all these things, we try to walk that barrier between the philosophical directive piece that, that the strategic plan calls us to, but also to be at that level that's easily understood uh, and uh, observable, experienceable, if that's a word, but the, where we can, we can see that this is actually happening. So I think it has been a good uh, process and a good document for us to, to live by. This fall, and I believe it's August 13th, uh, we are doing our uh, 
beginning of the year, and I'm looking for somebody who's got a calendar in front of them to verify that date. Uh, okay, August 13th, we'll do our uh, beginning uh, down at the uh, Grand River Center. And part of that, while it's very much a communal drawing people back together, recreating the team after they've been away for the summer, but it is also my opportunity, our opportunity to report to our other stakeholders, our teachers, our uh, secretaries, custodians, what have we done about <coughs> the strategic plan to remind them of its importance and to make sure they stay focused on that, but then also to give them uh, and make sure that they understand what our priority initiatives are for the upcoming year because we understand that it's their daily attention to that that really leads to, to uh, change and, and to implementation. So with all that, I will hand this out. Uh, we will go through. Um, you guys have copies. This is certainly if you have questions, um, you can ask as we go. And again, this is not meant to be everything that we do, but it is everything. Not everything we do is on the sheet, but everything on the sheet we will do. So let me start with uh, uh, student. Uh, well, I can read one through. I haven't used my glasses. Uh, student development. Uh, one of the things that we have uh, had great success with is the LEAP program at uh, Jefferson and Washington, and we have wanted to replicate that at least in part at Roosevelt. So we met with, um, uh, Shirley and I and Mike talked with the uh, um, foundation about providing some dollars to bring a LEAP type program to uh, Roosevelt Middle School. So that is after school programming and we've talked a lot about why as, as uh, student development that those connections to the, to the school outside of the normal school day are important. And we were doing that for the 1,200 or so middle school students who were at Jeff and Wash, but we didn't have a way to bring that to the 1,100 students. So it almost doubles the number of students that, that this will uh, be available to. We won't be able to bring all of the programming uh, that is sponsored through the grant, but we will bring uh, a significant amount. And I think, uh, surely, we decided it'd probably be eight to 12 opportunities per month uh, for the students at Roosevelt Middle School. So I think this is a great uh, uh, enhancement to uh, student development at the middle school level. The next step, and this comes with uh, somewhat uh, a segue from uh, our challenging behavior team, but to develop four elementary classrooms and one middle school classroom specifically designed to address uh, behavior management. Students with challenging behaviors will have more resources to help them learn. So this is, I don't want to really call it a pilot, but it is a first step that direction. Uh, I, I wish you could have been here today. I had a chance to sit in on a part of the meeting, but the folks from those buildings uh, were in this very room uh, talking about how next year will be organized and, and working through a process with that. And, and it was, uh, the presenter did a great job and I talked to principals and teachers as they left and it's, not always common for folks to leave a professional development session on June 23rd after having been here for an entire day and see the positive comments that they made. So uh, this will uh, be uh, definitely uh, an opportunity for us to continue to, to move forward with, uh, with that. Um, we are also very focused, and I think this came from the activities uh, committee, but creating initiatives to increase activity participation in students transitioning from eighth to ninth grade. We uh, <coughs> believe, and they've looked at that data, those numbers, that we lose a significant number of kids who are actively involved in some type of after school, before or after school programming at the middle school level who for some reason don't find their way into that or similar activities at the high school level. And we do believe it's important for students. Uh, the research would show that, that there is great success to be found that students that are tied to their school outside of the normal school day. So we are going to focus uh, that work and whether that means, it could be, we could take a, several uh, paths. It may be the activities we offer aren't the right activities and we need to look at, uh, at that. Maybe we're not offering enough of the same activities, but so how, what is it that we need to, and part of it just might be a, do students feel connected enough or invited to participate at the, at the high school level. So uh, we are very focused on making sure that we don't lose students between 8th and ninth grade. 
Um, green Dot, uh, you're familiar with the, the Green Dot training. Uh, that was done uh, this year. So one of our initiatives next year will be to launch a Green Dot Violence Prevention Program for middle and high school students. So the training was done uh, this year. Teams were established. And so now to bring that to scale at the uh, middle school, high school level next year for, for, all, for all of our students. And then uh, review middle school performance character pilot and explore expansion. So we talked about that earlier. We've done a pilot. Um, we think there's some good information there. So how do we bring that um, character assessment will be enhanced and measured on student report cards. How do we bring that to scale? And what is the, what is the pilot, I guess, tell us? And, and where, how do we bring this into uh, more students, you know, at the K-12 uh, level instead of just the middle school. Well, I know I shared this I with you, you earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a question. Question or comment? I I'm glad to see it as a review because it was a pilot, and and when I first heard feedback from parents, it was I heard negative feedback. It was inconsistent. Um, teachers didn't know exactly what it was that they were doing. So, and, and I shared that back um, mm -hmm. at the ed programs. But I think it needs to really be reviewed. And I, and I would like to see what those results are. I, not that I, too many times a pilot is put in place at the school district level and it's called a pilot and it goes forward without really I, I don't want to say that I don't necessarily trust what is being um, the review is coming from. Is it really coming from the teachers that they actually embrace this and want to do this? Once in a while, for, I don't want it to look like when it's a pilot, it automatically goes through. Why call it a pilot if it's not something that we would necessarily continue with? If it's not going to work, it's not going to work. And I'm not saying that's where it is with this at all. I'm not saying that. I just haven't heard any of the positives yet. We've really only had one grading period that we would have gotten feedback from. I realize you don't hear, you're not going to hear anything back from the, this last grading period. People are done with that teacher. They're moving on. It's not going it, to, for me, it's, it's, I'd be like, well, I'll see how it works next year. But my point is, I would really, just one time, um, and this is inside of this being a pilot, as we do all of these different initiatives, when we put the strategic plan together, if you remember, we stated many times that it's okay to fail. Meaning it's okay that if we put, if an idea is put out there and it's not well adapted at the building level, whether the people at the administration think it's the greatest thing next to sliced bread, if it doesn't implement well between teachers and parents, take the guts to say, we put time into this, but we're not going to do it. And I'm not saying that that's what this is. I am saying just as we go through the strategic plan, just once I would love for us to say, you know what, we tried this and don't like it and we thought it would work and it's not going to work and we're not going to do it. I, I think if we could hear that one time, people would be like, they really mean it yeah. when they say it's a pilot or whatever it is. And I'm not saying that this isn't going to be it. I do have a problem with it calling it character because performance, there is a difference between teaching character as, as what character really is and what is expected as performance um, that is needed for school. You know, being ready, being on time, having your materials. That's not necessarily character. The literature would make a differentiation, as you point out, between performance character and ethical character. I think, I think it is a, word, a term that is being used too broadly. Whether it's in the literature or not, that doesn't mean the literature is correct. I believe, I, I, I know a lot about what character is supposed to be in, in some of the, the experiences and that I have had. But I just I, I just I worry that we're counting that as character where I think we need a heck of a lot more character education in our schools other than performance. And this is a start. Yeah. But um, I, I'm just I'm very glad to see that we're reviewing it and I really, really, really at some point would love because I know not everything that we do 
is something that is going to be wants to be implemented at the building yeah. level. And I would love for our the forum team to say, you know what, it didn't go over well. Yeah. We're scrapping it just but, once. Yeah. And, I'm not and, and I and I would agree. And, and again, not about that particular. Exactly. Thing. I mean, if we're not. Failing once in a while, we're probably not pushing hard enough. And I, I mean, obviously, we're new in this process, and so we're we're pretty strategic in making sure we pick things that we are pretty I understand sure that. Go well. I understand that. But we stated we, that and over I, and over again. I understand. Again and so as our, we as this yep. process we matures, we'll see that. And and so I do think we, we have to talk about that. I, I know that when we talk with uh, business owners and those folks, you know, what do they want? It kind of gets into some of the soft skill and work ethic and showing up to work on time. And so, how do we do have a responsibility I think, to to ensure that students and parents understand that is that or not happening or not happening with their with their son or daughter. So, but no, I understand your point that failure is sometimes, you know, it's that old. <clears throat> President Lincoln poster about all the failures he had and then he became the president mm -hmm. kind of thing. I mean, you, ha you have to push sometimes to not be afraid to Well, I just, before fail, it gets expanded, I would really like to see, do the teachers know exactly what is expected of them? Do the parents understand what this really means? Because I had parents saying, this is ridiculous. What, what does this mean? One teacher says this and with the same student, this teacher is saying, mm -hmm. this is completely, you know, two different scores uh, however it's graded and they they're like what a honestly someone said what a joke and so I'm like well it's a pilot we're gonna it's not necessarily going to happen it's, it's got to try it somewhere and get the bugs out yeah. so and that's it and that's good conversation Perfect. for for the ed programs yeah policy whatever, whatever so change change that yeah <laughs> that whatever committee. That okay that's good that's Jim, good did you have a question yeah, I had a question uh, just just to clarify that green dot mm -hmm. Program is that our basically our anti-bullying program? That's certainly part of it. Um, it was it was sponsored through a grant, and May Henshin uh, and uh, others brought that to the district. May is actually in Portland. Pardon? Now? Yeah. Boise. Oh, Boise. She's and so. Uh, She's not here, able to be here tonight with us to, to talk through that. But it's it started out of as a more of a. Uh, Dating violence, sexual violence type of a training, but we have, it's been, I should say we, but May and, and folks have, have tweaked that into more of a, a overall bullying and, and harassment uh, response. I'd like to see somewhere, I don't know how to do that exactly, somewhere where that probably is addressed more directly. I think this is pretty direct. I mean, we certainly can, you know, um, have her do uh, a larger uh, report out on this. I okay. think she maybe did one uh, earlier in the year last year, but we can do, uh, so show you some of the videos. They've made some videos and some of the training that the kids are going through and they're putting together teams. And, you know, this certainly isn't going to be the silver bullet, but I think it is uh, a much more direct than, than maybe it seems the way I'm presenting okay. it right here. But we certainly will circle back around and, and bring that uh, to ask May to bring that to the board at a, at a meeting early in the fall. And, as I think it would be good just so everybody in yeah. the community understands right. what does the green yep. dot mean. Yeah, well, I mean, because to it, me, when I first, I'm like, does that have to do with recycling? Or is yeah, a, you know, yeah, green no. initiative, you yeah, keep absolutely. hearing green, everything. And it's and it's a way of, there's a visual yeah. with it that really absolutely. is um, It's You'll be impressed, well. I think, when, yeah. when you see it. I think, I think it is a significant program. And so last year was really a training planning year that involved uh, teams uh, of teachers and, and guidance counselors and assistant principals. And then now this year we'll put it in implementation. But I made a note of that to have May come in as the school year starts and give you a little more thorough briefing on that. Okay, community engagement. Uh, first one, update policies and procedures for data sharing, school attendance, and school readiness uh, and summer learning. These efforts support the community-wide action plan to enhance third grade reading. Uh, as we work through, this is a very specific uh, need, and it may not seem the way, that the way it's written, but uh, for the, our counterparts and service agencies uh, in the community, um, this looking at these policies and procedures and how we can communicate with them is significant. There are often barriers that we've imposed on ourselves uh, through policy about how we, now there are some legalities that we'll never be able to change, but we do want to make sure that our policies allow us to uh, sort of play well with others, quite honestly, and uh, take that sort of, you know, uh, a whole village approach kind of thing and, and be able to partner with um, whether it be the school foundation or the community foundation or other you know, service providers 
um, in a way that's not blocked by our, our own policies in the, in the instances where we have choice. Some places we just don't have choice. Um, increased advocacy efforts related to student mental health issues and services. The district will be the voice on the issue that touches many students and families. We talked about this uh, last year a little bit. Uh, last year was the first time it was a UEN legislative priority and we would like to continue to make sure that we are a voice at the table. Uh, we certainly aren't the mental health providers, but we certainly interact on a very regular basis with those who are. Our job is to educate all students, and that includes students who, who struggle in, in a variety of ways, and one of those issues would be with mental health. So while we don't want to reach in and, and take over the mental health world, because A, that's not our background, and B, we're not funded to do that, we certainly want to advocate for those folks who do provide that service, and we certainly want to draw connections to that so that as we serve students, they can, can help us understand how best to, to educate the students that we do have. So we want to keep that on uh, people's radar that this is an issue. And certainly we are supportive of uh, uh, helping folks solve that problem and, and working with the agencies to provide that uh, service. Um, we wanted to keep this to a plan on a page, so in a couple of places you'll say it looks like they stuck three things in one bullet. <laughs> <laughs> the next would be an example of that. Um, we're redesigning the district school websites so that they're a little more user friendly and easy to find the, the information that you want. We're also going to launch the Cracker Barrel style forum with administrators, so in this room several times a year. We will publish, a, whether it be a Saturday morning or a Tuesday night kind of thing, uh, maybe do a 10 minute overview on something, but then quite honestly be available uh, to the community to come in and, and say, you know, it's kind of an extended uh, open forum uh, for the community. Board members could certainly uh, be in attendance if they wish, but it wouldn't necessarily be uh, designed to ask them questions as much as it would be to ask the superintendent or others, whether it be about a specific agenda item or whether it just be a bring all of your issues and just drive that that level of communication. So wow, we'll see. that's a big deal. It'll it'll be interesting. That's to be just offer that. I mean, I, that you don't, uh, that's terrific. That's terrific. That's a, yep. that's a great thing that you're offering our citizens without any pressure to do so. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, so, that's great. Yeah, so I think I mean, that's seriously. A, <coughs> right, you're right. Another. That's usually what brings it about yeah. is something. Crisis or yep. complaints or something. Boy, that's taking it to the next level. So, and we're just trying to think of ways that, that we can do that. And then the last one, create a student advisory group. Quite honestly, sometimes as a superintendent, <coughs> just miss being around kids. And so I'm going to create, whether it be composed of, I don't know how we'll compose it, I'll work with the high school, middle school principals, where I have an advisory group of just students that I meet with uh, two, three, maybe four times a year about student-centered issues and, and get their feedback on, I don't know, everything from I don't know, school lunch to dress codes to whatever, whatever it is that we were talking about or activities, <laughs> uh, those kinds of things. So I was just looking for a little fun in my life, so I meet with students a few times a year. Jim? Uh, who, who does the actual individual school websites? I know the district websites are... Let Mike, uh, that's what we're fixing right that's now. What, yeah, that's what they're <laughs> fixing right now. Uh, right now, Jim, there's a building um, staff member who handles the all of the web content for their building sites currently. So um, in most cases, that's the technology coach in the building. Um, it does vary at the high school level. There are some differences. So there are a couple of exceptions to that, but by and large, it's the building technology coach. The way it's set up right now, um, the person who does that has to have um, a more advanced skill set to be able to actually design the sites. The, this new redesign will totally recreate the back end of the system so it's user friendly. You won't have to have design experience. It'll take out some of the manual work that happens with adjusting code and save you all the technical details, but it'll allow us to expand who has access to update those sites so that we can distribute the content management. Right now there's one person in every building who really has to update all of the content for that. Um, and the same at the district level, this will let us decentralize who has ability to update things and we can set permissions so that um, certain areas could update only certain pages and it can be drilled down to the page specific level. So, uh, But right now in the buildings there's a one staff member designated as the lead for the building site. That, that poor one person, mm -hmm. I mean, my gosh, yeah. you think about what an overwhelming yeah. task that could be for that one person to have to <laughs> keep Well, trying. I know it seems like it seems trivial to have this as there, but it is it's huge. huge. Parents yep. get so yep. frustrated with the school websites, and I know the one at senior high school, every single time that comes up that it's just like, 
it's just hard to navigate. They do a good job of what they can do, like you said, trying to figure out to get the information up there, but <clears throat> parents go nuts trying to find what they need to find, and that they just, so this is really good. And I think part of the significance of this piece is that it's not, it is a, it is a complete redesign visually, but it's also a complete refresh of organizational structure how the pages are set up to make sure that what the users are looking for is there in the most effective way and then it totally will change the complete workflow that it will be it, it will just be a, a polar opposite of how workflow happens now so it'll make it actually doable to keep keep fresh and dynamic great thank you I have another question Mike uh, was there this company I, I'm not sure the name of it anymore Bandbox or Juice Box or something. Juice Box. They have, they have something to do with this. So Juice Box Interactive is the firm that we're using. They're a web design firm out of Des Moines. The three principals in the firm um, have significant experience working on UEN school district websites. So they bring a great educational background to the site, and they're working on the back end of the system, and we're working with them to develop that. And um, the plan is to launch the district website somewhere around the first of the calendar year, um, and then over the second half of the school year. Um, be transitioning into school sites. Thank you. Uh, continue. Okay. Sorry. Um, so the TAP program, uh, we talked a little bit about that earlier, but it's increasing uh, employability for students with disabilities. Uh, that was is done through a, a grant that we have and. Uh, I've been able to come to a couple of meetings. Rosie, I don't know if you want to speak to this or not, but it's it's just uh, a way to make sure that all of our students have, uh, or as many students as possible, have an opportunity to be successfully employed uh, post-graduation. The nice thing is it's a connection to workforce development. So when our students in services at age 21, that continues. you, you got to use a microphone, or I'm getting a head shake from the audio <laughs> folks back there. <laughs> Felicia's not happy with me. <laughs> Is this it? Yes. Yep. <laughs> So the TAP program is a cooperative agreement between the school district, the vocational rehabilitation, and um, the Department of Education, and it allows the school district to work with those partners through the age of 21 and the voc rehab to take over and support to the age of 25. So I think that it's a great opportunity, again, for us to use those connections in the community, increasing the amount of paid employment for students with disabilities so this is the last one they're going to approve and it is a hybrid so we're excited about that thanks Rosie yep uh, and then the final one is to again it's about parent uh, connection so conduct outreach to increase building level parent participation <coughs> I think the district has done that for 150 years that it's been in in existence but we need to always put that as a focus to make sure that all of our parents regardless of uh, you know, it, regardless of, of their situation, feel invited to be involved in our school district, involved in uh, local uh, school-based uh, decision-making or uh, parent groups, or at least come to the open houses, those sorts of things. So one of the things we learned with our site visit from the state, we had, uh, they did uh, input sessions or they did listening sessions with uh, different schools, and uh, there's a lot of uh, of not a lot of diversity in in the folks who came to those meetings and we want to make sure that we always have that on our radar that we want everybody to feel included and have access to to our uh, our schools so just something we want to not lose sight of and so we put that on our uh, priority initiatives effective resource management um, initiate uh, planning for next stages of facility plan with focus on senior high school renovation and the school pool solution. So I had referenced earlier some of these other documents that guide our work and quite honestly some of these things we just pull forward every year because we don't want to lose sight of that. I mentioned um, uh, Kennedy but also there was work done uh, completed at Sageville, um, work done at um, Washington. Washington, thank you, Jones, um, Jones. Jones and, and of course Jefferson. Hempstead, uh, Jefferson lockers are, are underway as we speak. Um, but now it's time to, to begin the planning process, knowing that the planning process in and of itself is, is somewhat lengthy, takes uh, uh, some time. So we want to begin the planning process for the next major renovation at Senior High School to coincide shortly after the completion of the 
uh, uh, Hempstead work. So knowing we've got a, some time yet to finish Hempstead, now is the time to start planning senior so that as um, Hempstead finishes, we can move right into uh, work at senior. We don't want uh, Bill and Charlie to have too much of a break, so we want to <laughs> jump from right from one to the next. Uh, and then, of course, we all know that we need a, a district pool solution. So uh, that can mean a lot of things. We are exploring conversations with uh, other folks, but we need to be able to solve this problem in relatively in, in, con, in the construction world, a relatively short period of time over the course of the next several years. Um, Nothing there. The technology plan again. It's it's just a, it's it's the next phases on where are we going with technology. So it's purchased twelve or 1,200 devices, 66 laptop cart laptop carts, in the district's five secondary schools and the ALC. Uh, you remember that this year uh, we purchased uh, laptop cart or carts and um, uh, the Lenovo ThinkPad 2, which is a sort of a, a tablet with a keyboard. Uh, we are. Kobe did a nice job. If you want to come up to the table, Kobe, and use the microphone, but you know, doing uh, his uh, work and making sure that there's some sort of customer satisfaction surveying going on, and uh, we will be bringing on board another, a different device for next year, which I believe we've shared with at least part of the board. That is correct. As we listen to our feedback from our stakeholders, most importantly our teachers and our students, uh, we had a sort of a, a, a change of idea that they wanted to go back to a traditional laptop at the secondary setting, if you will. So it provided more real estate on the screen, a little bit more um, technical specs for them to be able to do the multiple things that they wanted to do in a day. So we negotiated out uh, a very aggressive uh, deal with Hewlett Packard and that is the vendor that we chose and we brought to the facility support committee um, basically what that model laptop would be and we were fortunate enough to be able to get 1200 of those devices on 66 cards that will complement our 21st century learning program as well. And what we talked about at a previous meeting is that it doesn't change the software, doesn't change what a student views, so a student can very easily go from a classroom that is utilizing uh, the, the ThinkPad tablets to a classroom who has the HP laptops and, and nothing changes other than the size of the device, uh, the size of the keyboard. So they're very, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but they, they won't change the user experience. And so we think that the, uh, the tablets have a, a, a very useful life ahead of them. It's not that we're moving to something new and putting these in the, in the closet, quite the opposite. We will continue to use these devices throughout their, their life expectancy. It just seemed to make sense that we evolve with our purchases, listening to what uh, our teachers and our students are saying. And they're saying, <coughs> we'd like a little bit bigger keyboard. And uh, we'd like a, a, a screen that uh, synchronizes with our uh, keyboard a little easier. So <coughs> Phoebe's recommendation and one that the board approved was to move uh, to a, a laptop situation. Well, we'll let the record show exactly what you wanted to have happen just happened. We, we were on a path to yep. use tablets. Yay! Yep. And, and somebody in the forum said, no, this isn't working. Let's go a different route. Yes. Talk to your Those stakeholders. Those are easy ones to change. <laughs> well, <laughs> not really. I mean, really. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. I know that's yeah. an easy yeah. one. Kobe, that was easy if you don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it really, it, that is, okay. it, you're right, that is an example. We said, you know, this, yeah. this works okay, but we don't want okay. We want, mm -hmm. we want to improve. And so Kobe has, has done a very uh, uh, nice job with uh, surveying his customers and saying we need to provide something a little different. And but we want you to fail more than once. So that's the right. <laughs> Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> fail getting better. Um, the next thing, uh, again, we, we uh, some of this gets a little technical, but develop a technology refresh cycle, implement the cloud-based Office uh, 365 for education solutions. So it's just calling out that three, uh, Office 365 is the direction that, that we are moving uh, for our students and our staff. And then uh, implement refined safety protocols and enhance physical security measures in the district. We have a safety security um, uh, committee with with our SROs as well as some of the other uh, police, uh, sheriff, and fire department, and they've developed some some training uh, that we are going to begin to implement uh, in the fall. Take a, initial go through is about an hour and a half uh, at the building level with each building, and then we'll uh, continue enhance from there. So, all right.
Employee excellence, and I almost feel bad that this is just sort of a bullet like many other bullets because I really think if you look at the district as a whole for next year, the significant, there are many things that are changing and, and all of these initiatives are important, but there really are several that are probably bigger players than the others. <coughs> and certainly the teacher leadership, um, and we're not calling it a teacher leadership grant anymore, we're calling it a teacher leadership system because it's uh, it's a permanent grant, it's dollars that we'll receive every year. So it's making sure that we not only hire, but we also train and support the 200 plus teachers and that number is closer to, to 220, but there is some flexibility there so we wanted to put a number, uh, so we put 200 in there, into those new, uh, teacher leadership positions and this is a significant change in how teachers collaborate and learn from each other so it's something that really ought to probably be bolder and bigger and more highlighted but uh, it really is probably one of the two or three largest game changers that will happen in the district next year. So I'm very excited about that and it's going to cause for a very condensed summer <laughs> for many folks as we put this into play um, but long term it's going to be, it's going to be a, a great benefit for the district. Uh, second to that or in collaboration with that is launch school-based professional learning on Friday morning late starts. That would be another one that I would put in there in big bold letters. So maximize the time to provide ongoing impactful building level training that enhances student learning. I think one and two there combined make <coughs> a powerful team. It's the ability to do uh, professional development at the building level because they're closest to the needs of what that particular, the students in that building need, therefore they can focus their professional development on, on, this, on their staff. Uh, they will have more teacher leaders um, working with them to, to develop that and provide that professional development. So really I think those two pieces are the biggest game changers that, that we're talking about tonight. But uh, very excited about uh, both the te teacher leadership system and the Friday morning late starts. You know, too much, too, historically we kind of hear about professional development saying, well, you know, it's kind of a sit and get or it's a one and done kind of thing. I go back to my classroom and I do what I've always done. This is a way that we can do in small chunks every week throughout the course of the year. And and, uh, and we will be very uh, transparent about that. We've talked to the principals about we are going to communicate to our stakeholders on a very regular basis what's happening on those Friday mornings and how does that translate into a better educational experience for your for your students. We don't want to just uh, assume it's uh, people know what we're doing. We want to be very focused on what's happening during those Friday mornings and how does that enhance the other uh, hours in the week. So I'm very excited about that. Now the third thing that kind of fits in there is provide monthly leadership focused professional learning for district and school administrators. We had a two day uh, leadership training last week uh, with all of our administrators and part of that is because it's something we should be doing but part of it is because we are asking many of our administrators to go from to transition to being the leader of leaders. So now they've got all these teacher leaders and it's different uh, situation to be the leader of leaders versus the leader of, of your staff and so how can they maximize those new teacher leaders that we are putting into place how do we how do we create uh, a situation where we're uh, uh, maximizing that effectiveness it's not just a you know a hierarchical situation but how do you empower people to make decisions and how do you empower people to uh, actually be leaders so uh, that's a very those three things combined together um, I'm very excited about. What's an example of something that would be covered in that program? Well, we so we're going to do that on a, on a monthly basis, and we're going to talk about. Um, so we have several um, uh, resources that we're sort of evaluating, and we don't want to turn it into just a book study, but we'll use a book uh, to to uh, help us move forward. And one of the ones, and uh, actually, I believe. Uh, is the leadership challenge, but we're going to talk about how do you, as a building leader, inspire a vision? How do you encourage people to uh, uh, make decisions? You know, because we have, we're looking at teachers, people who have really been in classrooms their whole scenario, their whole career, and we're going to put them into into leadership positions, and so we have to put our leaders 
our building principals and assistant principals and, and instructional coaches and folks in a, in a situation where they can uh, facilitate or they can help these people understand what leadership means and, and promote collaboration because it's not going to be, again, it's not a, in my vision anyway, it's not a hierarchical type of a leadership. It's a, it's a shared uh, type of a leadership. So we've got, uh, certainly don't have that all planned out, but uh, we're going to work through some some literature, some I don't want to call the book because it's not just here read a book, but it, talking through scenarios with our with our principals so that they can take that back and, yeah. and work through their team with that. So real leadership skills. That's certainly the board. intent, and we will report out to the board, you know, three times a year and show you where we've come with that. You know, I know so Loris uses it. the leadership challenge in their curriculum too. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting if there'd be enough people in the area that tap into that resource, you know, we have a connection with that author. Yeah. It'd be great to... Yeah, so it's really focused on leadership. It, it, so it, it, it probably is slightly different than a lot of, I mean, we spend most of our lives in the educational world, but we want to just look at what is leadership and focus on that at least for a portion of, at least for the coming year. Jim, I have yeah. a question. Uh, just curiously, uh, so those sessions, you said you had one already? There was a two-day two one currently, uh, okay. previously. Okay. So who's who's kind of leading those sessions? Are, are the so the first one, uh, the, the first two was done by Denise Shears, Dr. Denise Shears, who teaches at the University of Northern Iowa. Okay. And that was just kind of as a jump start thing. And at the University of Northern Iowa, they're, I don't know if they're required or they're just asked to, to provide some professional development. Um, with the, so they didn't cost us anything. She didn't wasn't she wasn't a paid. Uh, we, I think we paid her transportation, but that was about it. And so now we'll transition into this. And I would most of that's going to revolve on me as the superintendent. So that's something that I look forward to working with the principals with. But there'll be roles for others as well. I mean, <coughs> Lynn and Nancy, David, others will certainly play a, a part of that. We already have. We've had historically since long before I came here. Um, monthly district leadership meetings, so we're going to tag this on to that and expand that time frame and do uh, some leadership uh, conversations, leadership training. If there's true leadership content um, going on, that might be a good thing for board members to be invited to as well. It'd be great to sure. sharpen the saw a little bit on some of that stuff ourselves, yep. maybe. Yeah, we'd be happy to have you as long as we don't break any quorum issues, but I think we could, yeah, we'll let you know when those are. Absolutely. That'd be great. All right, where did we go? Oh, and then uh, implement a professional learning plan for paraprofessionals. Um, uh, Kirsten Schumacher is uh, the teacher in charge of uh, our paraprofessionals. We have 410 paraprofessionals. We spend a significant amount of our of resource on having paraprofessionals. She has a very uh, significant plan that she presented to us about uh, individualizing per professional uh, professional development, whether they work with uh, uh, autistic students or behavior students, or did, we just really need to maximize that resource because we certainly spend a uh, significant number of dollars uh, employing those uh, folks, and they, it can bring so much to a classroom uh, to support the teacher. So we, we are going to focus in a way that we've not focused in the past on professional learning for paraprofessionals. And I know many of those folks are in training today. Uh, I know there's a week-long training around uh, uh, autism and, and um, structured classrooms over at Carver. There were some <coughs> paras in attendance at the meeting I mentioned earlier today in this room. So trying to focus on utilizing or maximizing the utilization of that resource. I think that's good because at least it shows the, the value of what their job is. I mean, they're the first yeah. contact yeah. with all of our students. Yeah. And, and, it, and I hope the message gets to them that they're also looked upon as role models with those students, just as much as the classroom teacher is. And all that encompasses that, you know, with expectations yeah. of being a paraprofessional. And it's not just a body in the classroom with someone. Absolutely. So I think that's it's a good that yeah. we're focusing on that. Yeah, often the, the students, I mean, the, 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 the paraprofessionals and the teachers understand some of the dynamics there, but a lot of times the students don't. You know, right. They see two adults there, and they, they're yeah. not sure. So, I mean, it certainly is, when we have 410, uh, it seems to, to be common sense that we maximize uh, those folks and, and the service they provide for the district. Well, not to 
diminish any of the other categories, but you said it earlier when you started talking about I think you could take this whole category, and if you had a little stamp you'd put on it, say this is a really big deal because the rest of our strategic plan almost falls apart yeah. unless right we people. put to make sure that we've got the very best teachers, the very oh, best yeah. administrators, the very best paraprofessionals in front of our kids each and every day. Absolutely. And I, I think this is long overdue. It's great that the teacher yeah. leadership grant came into play, but you know, unless we have this knocked out of the park, yeah. the rest of this stuff will we can probably be good, but we won't be great. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm really excited to watch and yep. see how this transpires, because I think this really puts our money where our mouth is, and it's really going to be up to everybody from, again, that, you know, that frankly, that's a, we've talked about this, it's, a, it's from that bus driver, that cafeteria, yep. all, the, all the way up to understand yep. the impact that they can have, and I, I, I'm excited to see that this is this has actually got some feet underneath it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you've heard me talk before that Good to Great is one of the books that, that I yep. think has some good leadership lessons in it. And certainly they talk about the right people on the right bus and the right seat. And that's always the intent. I mean, we're a people business. We spend 82%, 83% of our overall budget uh, on, on, on salary and benefits. And so that really is, there's a lot of meat there. Well, and I think it goes back to what we've talked, and we, we want to be the district of choice too, mm -hmm. from you know from a talent acquisition yeah, perspective. Absolutely. And I think you do this right, and, and that's what helps make you as much a, sure. an employer of choice as it does making sure we're delivering on our you know our our mission and vision for the kids we serve. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you may remember there was a time when student achievement was at the beginning of this report and we moved it to the end because we really look at many things, well everything funnels towards or builds towards student achievement. The reason we want employee excellence, the reason we want to effectively use our resources and engage the community and do student development is because we want our students to achieve at the highest level possible. And so we've moved student achievement to, to the end. and three or five years when we redo the strategic plan, it might look a little different physically with student achievement in a, in a different position or something, but we really did want that to be, uh, that everything builds towards that. So we, we've picked out uh, four areas for our student achievement. Um, the first one is a continuation of one that was mentioned earlier. So de, 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 if I can read, develop and deploy the Iowa core standards through common grade and course benchmark assessments. So this is where we do get into a little bit more of the, of the educational uh, specifics because yeah. it's it's you know what we it's what we do as, as a school district so the Iowa core standards as you know is uh, the direction we're moving as a state and so we certainly are committed to moving forward with making sure that we have those uh, course outcomes and a staff that's prepared to deliver that implement the system of collective inquiry to plan, develop, and deliver instruction based on the indicators of highly effective schools. Building leadership teams will implement an evidence-based process to improve instruction for all students. Again, that relates into uh, our Friday mornings. It relates into our teacher leadership. It is building leadership teams will implement an evidence-based process to improve instruction for all students. How do we improve our instruction? That's what the basis, that's the bedrock of what we do. And certainly teacher leadership will help with that. Certainly Friday morning professional development will help with that, but so will many of the other things that we do. Just a comment that is just <clears throat> what we've tried to do, I think, through the strategic plan and through the significant you know, targets for the coming year is to stay away from, mm -hmm. I don't know what system of collaborative inquiry is. I, I could probably guess but I'm thinking that the general public as a whole might struggle with that. Yeah. Is there a way to... You know, I... <clears throat> to me, I think that we're open to suggestion on this, is we can maybe strengthen the blue, which is the descriptor. I mean, I don't know that we can change the name. I mean, I guess we could... But it's, it's how we describe it that maybe could be more clear. Does that make sense? You could yeah. take the word collaborative inquiry out and just say, sit, you know, plan, develop, and deliver instruction. Collaborative inquiry is the name of the process. 
Yeah. And, that, and that's why I, I, I agree with you. You could just strike, you know, imp, you know implement a plan to develop and, and a plan to develop and deliver instruction based on that. But I'm just thinking. Sure, I'm we thinking will get <coughs> of the general public's um, purview of yeah, that. I think that's one of the things I know that I've gotten feedback on from people is that they can read it and, and understand it. and know exactly sure. what it is that we say we're going to do. And and I, I get that maybe a lot of people within you know the educational system yep. might know what that is, but um, we, we we talked about a couple of we knew there might be some might be questions <laughs> along those lines, line. and, and okay. that's fine. Okay. Yeah, we can, I, we can I, tweak I just that. suggest that maybe that, that we keep that intact, and that that was just one that jumped yep. off to me. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. We can keep that intent, and make it a little more <laughs> user friendly. Um, or Matt three integrate the Iowa <clears> Core, <throat> and here's another one: multi-tiered systems of support. Uh, to identify and respond to the learning and behavior challenge, staff will be able to better respond to the individual learning needs of students. That one, um, again, we could make a name change. I guess I would say maybe what we need to do is do more education around that. I think that one, when you see, it is basically what are the tiers yeah. of support that a student qualifies for and, and what are, how are we going to respond to that. If there's, if there's a specific name of the program, it, it goes back to the English writing stuff. There should be quotes around it or an underline or an italics. So at least people can see that it's a specific, you don't get caught trying to figure out the word as part of a larger sentence. Okay. But you don't want us wordsmithing this thing to no, death either. No. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but if that's Those a program are, that you're implementing, then we know that it is it, something that, it is a program that you're implementing. Yeah. And, yeah. We can That's ask good. you, what do you mean? <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. We'll spend some time with that, that, both in the ed programs as well as the larger board. Yeah. And then uh, this started uh, this morning. Three days ago, right? Uh, create and deliver a summer school program for kindergarten and first grade students with low reading proficiency and enhanced ongoing instruction assessment in the area. Young learners will have a chance to bolster critical reading, early reading skills. Lynn, do you want to report out what you saw this morning, what you experienced? We started, a great, we started out great this morning. Um, we had, uh, I was at Prescott where we greeted over 100 children and I had a report about from Eisenhower right before this meeting started. We had children who were raring to go. We had a few children who didn't really know what they were coming for. Mom and Dad didn't tell them why they were getting in the car. I could see them in the front door toward me as they got further down the hallway, the realization. <laughs> Wait, God. this looks a lot like school. Yeah. Um, but yeah. we, I, it was very exciting. Um, our staff was excited to greet the, the children and um, they were ready and at the books. I was reported to by both principals. So, so by how many later this afternoon. Did we end up That's good. We had, you said 100 at Prescott alone? Uh, we have about 110 at each building. We really tried wow. to even yeah. that out. So um, we didn't have too many no shows. We wonder what tomorrow will bring, but we'll take who walks yeah. in the door. And those programs are in the morning at Prescott and uh, Eisenhower. So feel yep. free to, to do a pop in and, and yeah. take a look at what. Uh, is going on and, and we're hoping that this helps these young folks uh, get up to speed and, and catch up with their classmates and peers and be you know have a successful educational experience. I, I think that's really impressive I mean we, would would we have 50, 47 or whatever? Well it, it, the, the nature of it changed yeah. um, with the chapter 62 and, and the state requirements and uh, to the district's credit and really to Lynn's credit we are definitely uh, early implementers. Um, we could have waited until next year to begin yeah. summer school, but with the idea that the sooner you start, the better yeah. those kiddos will have a chance to be successful. Um, jumped in <laughs> pretty quickly, uh, which led to some stress, certainly, uh, to the folks uh, involved with that program. But at the end of the day, we have 220 uh, young folks yeah, uh, getting some additional reading support. Yeah. So fantastic. About how many teachers are at each school one? We have a ratio of one teacher for every 10 children. Okay. Which is something we, d we are not able to do during the school year. So there is a paraeducator and a teacher in every single classroom. Oh, awesome. Now whether we can, just to say to the public and to yourself, whether we can maintain that as we add more children will be a question because the dollars will stay static for most, the, most likely. Mm -hmm. But this is the year is, w you know, we have the, the dollars, we have the interest, so let's try to do as much intervention as possible. 
So the kids are there just in the morning and then they? Basically, um, <coughs> the programs at Eisenhower Prescott start a little bit differently just due to busing from the um, ESY program, but they usually run about eight to noon. So you'd either run into them, share breakfast with them, share lunch with them, or instruction. But, yeah, cool. And that's it. So, that's so all, those are our priority initiatives. Um, you'll notice the font got a little smaller from last year because we added a few more initiatives. Uh, we did try very hard to keep it on a page. We did debate whether to go to a legal size page, uh, but we did uh, condense a few things and, and pull a few things off. But again, we think that uh, we're with, the, with a few name changes there and, and a little bit more uh, uh, specificity, this hopefully is a document that people can look at and say, okay, we understand what's changing in the Dubuque Community School District from uh, uh, July 1 into June 30th during the 2014-15 school year. Other things as well, but these are things that we're going to see, we're going to hear, we're going to get reports of. I can ask a student uh, questions about this with technology or, or other things, um, or ex access to uh, ninth grade uh, activities, uh, programming, those types of things, and, and we should be able to hear an answer that, yeah, I, I am involved or I do utilize technology or whatever the question would be. So. We're excited about uh, next year. We're looking forward to a couple of weeks early in July of a break, but then we'll be back at it mid-July pretty hard. I think it's exciting. Yep. A lot of good things. Wow. Great. That's all I have. Any, anything else from the board? <clears throat> I want to thank and congratulate the superintendent and the staff. I think this is obviously yet another, another page we've turned in the in the district, supportive of the strategic plan, um, I think we've. I think we're. We will. This does represent. I think um, uh, stretching, and, and I think that's what the board's expecting that we're doing is is not just doing the, the you know handling the layups. It's really challenging ourselves and the people we work with to really make a difference. And I think this is, again, very consistent with what we what our expectations are from, from the board. And I think, quite honestly speaking, for the staff, and this is a team effort, I mean, many people go into the development of this document, but it, it, we've come to learn that it's a great thing because it, it really does guide what we do. You know, a year ago, it's a little more intimidating, like, well, you know, what, what will this process bring to us? And, and the combination of the strategic plan and these other technology facilities plan, as well as this really brings direction um, to our work, and I really didn't pay Kevin to say well, was, the strategic plan I, comment last week. I was going to say, but that 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 embodies what we're trying to do yeah. because we've got a good plan, and we've got engaged people. They know their impact. They know the out. They're seeing the outcomes, yeah. and that's what connects people and connects an organization. And I think that's that's the real benefit from having a well done plan. Absolutely. And it's not something we just did for <coughs> a year. And we did it, and now it's time to move on. I mean, we're continuing yep. wow. to follow exactly what we said. We, I mean, continuing to do it in the same manner. So it's, yep. now people are going to come to expect this. Absolutely. And, and look whole. to see, because it's like, oh, you really yep. did do it. You did it last yep. time. You did it this time. Yeah. Which well, I, and I think the next step is what Tom referred to earlier. And, and uh, you know, we are getting close to or we'll be on the cusp of being at least a couple years with this document. Yep, this time next year we'll end our second year. So. Right. And so, you know, really for us as a board, we have a challenge too, mm -hmm. and that is to revisit this, figure out what has changed, what's, what isn't on here that should be on here, Absolutely. and again, help working with you collaboratively to look at, okay, what's on there that we tried and, and really we can't move the dial on, so it's time to move on. But Absolutely. I really do think that's a, that's got to become more of our focus as a board is, is uh, and it's not redoing it every year, but it's, no. I think, doing a, a good, solid, deep dive, and I think two years into it's a great time to sit back and look at that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm just thrilled that we're this far into a strategic plan and talk about it on an extremely regular basis. I mean, to the point, I mean, I, when people... Well, if you get like, guys get, like get, Keller are talking about right. it. Right. Mean, <laughs> yeah, you got something magic there's, there's, in the water. There's hope for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, if you walk around our buildings or you stop in yeah. on professional development that's happening there, or I mean, people are referencing 
where we're headed based on a variety of things, but part of that is based on the strategic yeah. plan. So I, that's just a, it's a unit, when you have 20, you know, when you have as large of a district as we do, it'd be easy to have these islands, and this certainly isn't the only thing, hopefully, that unifies us, but it's certainly a part of that. Great. All right. Everyone have a great evening. We are adjourned. Forgot my gavel. <laughs>